We have reached chapter two of our course about fundamental cryptography in theory and Python. And with this reached the chapter, which is all about the classic cryptography security goal confidentiality. As a recap, the four classic security goals of cryptography are confidentiality, integrity, authenticity, and non-repudiation. And confidentiality as a security goal demands that information in a system is only accessible to authorized parties. This is a good moment to pause and to try to think for yourself whether you can come up with ideas of systems from the analog non-information technical world that implement confidentiality in the analog world. The first classic approach to providing confidentiality in the analog world is the approach making use of safes with corresponding keys. At the risk of stating the obvious, how does this approach work? Let's assume we have Alice that wants to confidentially store a plain text. Alice can then take her plain text, walk up to the safe, and with the key of the safe, open the door of the safe, put in her plain text, as of which point the plain text is kept and stored confidential. If Alice later on wants to retrieve her plain text again, she needs to again walk up to the safe, take the key of the safe to open the door, and with this can then finally receive her plain text out of the safe. What is now the information in this example? The information is just the content of the plain text. What does it mean to be authorized to have access to this information? To be authorized means to either be the author of the plain text or to be in possession of the key of the safe. Once we get into cryptography, we will get to know symmetric encryption. Once we reach cryptography with symmetric encryption, remind yourselves of this approach, number one, making use of safe as symmetric encryption on a conceptual level works very much the same as the approach that makes use of safes together with the corresponding keys. While this approach perfectly well implements confidentiality in the analog world, it has the downside that if it would now be Alice that wants to send the plain text confidentially to Bob, then both Alice and Bob would need to have agreed on a specific safe beforehand and would need to have exchanged the corresponding keys before they could exchange the plain text confidentially. Taking this a step further, if we, for example, have a group of 10 participants where each pair of these 10 participants would want to confidentially exchange plain text, then each such pair would need to have a dedicated safe and would need to have exchanged the corresponding keys beforehand. With 10 participants, this is 45 pairs, and as such, 45 saves that would need to be available. Generalizing this a bit, we see that the number of saves required is roughly the square of the number of participants, which is a number that doesn't scale well with the number of the participants in the system. Again, you may now pause and think about an alternative approach that equally well provides confidentiality in the analog world, but doesn't suffer from the same limitation that the approach making use of safes has. The second approach to providing confidentiality in the analog world is the approach making use of mailboxes. Again, with the risk of stating the obvious, how does this approach work? Let's assume it's this time Bob that wants to retrieve a confidential piece of plain text. For that, Bob needs to own a mailbox for which only Bob has the corresponding private key to open. If Alice wants to send Bob a confidential piece of plain text, then Alice takes that plain text, walks up to the mailbox of Bob and throws the plain text into the mailbox of Bob. As of this point, the plain text is confidential. If Bob now wants to retrieve the plain text, Bob needs to take his private key of the mailbox, walk up to the mailbox, and with his private key, 
open the mailbox and then retrieve the plain text out of the mailbox. Again, what is the information in this approach? The information is still just the content of the plain text. What does it mean to be authorized to have access to this information? To be authorized means to be the author of the plain text or to be in possession of the private key for the mailbox. Once we go into cryptography, we will get to know something known as asymmetric encryption. Once we reach asymmetric encryption, remind yourselves again of this approach in the analog world, making use of mailboxes as on a conceptual level, asymmetric encryption works very similar to this approach, making use of mailboxes. Let's briefly talk about how mailboxes can now solve the limitation of quadratic numbers of safes required given a certain number of participants. With mailboxes, each participant in a system where data should be exchanged confidentially now just needs to own a mailbox with a corresponding key that this participant keeps private. All in all, this means that only a number of mailboxes linear to the number of participants is required, which is a number that perfectly well scales even for a large number of participants. However, also mailboxes have a limitation, which is the limitation that mailboxes can only accept small plain text. Looking at this drawing, you can think of this as the mailbox to maybe only accept letters and postcards, but not bigger boxes. This is now a new limitation. And again, please pause and try to think of an approach in the analog world that doesn't suffer from the limitation that approach one with the safes had, and that also doesn't suffer from the limitation that this approach number two with the mailboxes now have. As a hint, try to think of an approach that combines both of the approach that we have now seen into a new approach number three. A third approach that can provide confidentiality in the analog world and which is an approach that combines both the previous approaches is an approach that makes use of both safes as well as mailboxes. If again, the scenario would be that Alice wants to confidentially send a plain text to Bob, then the prerequisite would now be that Bob owns a mailbox with a corresponding private key for the mailbox. If Alice wants to send the plain text confidentially to Bob, then she, as a first step, would go to a hardware store, buy a completely new safe, as of which point it is only Alice that knows about the safe and has access to the keys of the safe. Alice would now take the safe and its keys, as well as her plain text, would walk up to the mailbox of Bob, would put the safe next to the mailbox of Bob. She then would take the key of the safe, open the door of the safe, put in her plain text and close the door of the safe. Then Alice would put the key of the safe into the mailbox of Bob and leave. In order for Bob to now get hold of the plain text, Bob would need to take his private key of the mailbox, walk up to the mailbox, take his private key to open the door of the mailbox, and with this, retrieve the key for the safe out of the mailbox. With this key of the safe he just retrieved out of the mailbox, Bob can then open the door of the safe and retrieve the plain text out of the safe. Again, information in this scenario is still just the content of the plain text. To be authorized to have access to the information means to either be the author of the plain text or to be in possession of the key for the mailbox. Once we get into cryptography, we will get to know hybrid encryption. And once we get there, remind yourselves of this combined approach of safes and mailbox, as again, the hybrid encryption on a conceptual level works pretty much the same like this combined approach making use of safes and mailboxes. This combined approach now also doesn't suffer from any of the limitations of the individual approaches, as the prerequisite is only that each participant in such a system now owns a mailbox and that by using safes, an arbitrarily large plaintext can be sent confidentially.
a wonderful hybrid approach to provide confidentially in the analog world, isn't it?